for playing Friday over and over. Our team of crisis responders begged the police to allow us to help, but they repeatedly denied our request. Despite assisting over 250 Patterson residents since our inception, the police refused to let us help our own brother in crisis. Today, we gather to honor Najee's memory, his smile, his energy, and to offer support to his family, our community. We demand justice and will continue Najee's work of bringing safety and healing to Patterson. Rest in love, Najee. We love you so much, King. Justice for Najee! 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 Justice
team that came that day, they need to be dismantled. Yes, they came with shotguns to, to, for a mental health crisis. Yes. That is just, I just don't understand. Right now, I'm getting a call from St. Joe's that means that there was a shooting that occurred, and one of us has to respond. We still have to go on and work. Mm. All right, we still have to go on and work. Because we're, we're here to save lives. That's what Najee did every day. When we work with survivors of violence, not everybody knows us. Because of his credibility in his community, say if we weren't able to reach them at the hospital, he would get them in the community. They knew that Najee was somebody that was credible and trustworthy. He was our liaison in the fourth ward to make sure that we get survivors into the office. You're gonna go through a lot of stuff, but it's all about how consistent you are and how you, how you stay true to yourself and get yourself out of them situations as well. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was in the youth outside one, at one point in time. I ain't called none of my boys. I called Mr. Moody. You know what I'm saying? I need to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, you gotta know your connections and stuff like that too. So, don't never be disrespectful to the people that's helping you. Real tough. You got a gun in there with you too? No, Najee, we don't want that. Come on, your daughter don't want that. Najee, your daughter doesn't want that. You don't want that to happen. How can we make this end nice and peaceful? We want you to be okay, and we want your daughter and everybody to be happy. But we can't do this all day. You know what I'm saying? There was a pressure for him to snap out of it. That saying law enforcement or police is a magical term that somehow is just gonna snap an individual out of their psychosis into a more sober and sane mind and now they'll become compliant, which is false. Mental health, crisis, psychosis, delusions, paranoias don't work like that. Najee was already in a very paranoid state and a delusional state and so what he wanted to feel was assured. He wanted to feel secure and safe, which was the reason why he called Patterson PD in the first place. There was a lot of contradictions. If you're telling somebody that they're safe, you don't have riot shields and guns pointed at the door. If you're telling someone that we want to get you home, we want to get you to the appropriate care, one of the things you don't do is you don't add a timeline. You don't tell someone like, we can't be here all day. I think that's essential. And to me, that's integral in patience. And patience did not seem like it was present. I think the reality of it is that officers are trained a particular way and they're not mental health providers, they're not mental health assessors, and they're not the appropriate level of care when it comes to responding to a mental health crisis. And that's understandable. And if that is the case, right, and we're recognizing that, then collaborate with resources, sort of allow humility to be present and allow other folks who may be trained professionals to take charge in that moment and sort of guide and direct what needs to happen step by step. Since we launched the hospital-based violence intervention program, I think that the police didn't understand our role. On March 3rd, I think that that was the climactic scene of they really don't respect this or understand our role. That whole time of four hours, our team was pleading with the police, can you please let us talk to Najee? We can help, we could be of assistance. He's asking for our help, here's the proof. These are people that have helped over 250 people in the community since we launched. And despite all this, they were declined from helping somebody that we love and care for and that asked for our help. You have to understand how disheartening, disappointing, how traumatic that is. And then hearing those gunshots, seeing militarized police for somebody that we love that is asking for help. They have to live with this now and still do the work that we do, which is constantly dealing with violence.
I do want to address one issue which I know is something that we're going to talk about a lot of time, which is how we respond to incidents mental health, emotional distress, people in crisis. All he wanted to do was help his community. And then when he needed help, he didn't get the help he needed. I was there from the beginning to the end, okay? And I never seen Najee in that state of mind. I don't know what went wrong, but all he was asking for was help. I just want justice for my son. Yes. You know, I just want justice because he didn't have to die like this. You know, everybody don't know, you know, the details of what these officers did to my son. But I know from the autopsy, he didn't have to die like that. So all I want is justice for my son, Najee C. Brooks. Because he did a lot for his community and I hope the community is behind him. Behind him. Yeah, behind him. We've been in go mode since Najee died. We've been organizing, we've been calling, we've been writing letters, we've been posting. We're waiting for justice from local leaders that it seemed like they didn't want to investigate the police department. It seemed like they were allowing the culture and climate of this police department to go unchecked. So when A.G. Placken validated the fact that this police department is a rogue department and not doing what it's supposed to do, it was like somebody's listening. If y'all didn't know, now he was the gunshot victim. He retaliated, he spied, he turned up, he used his injury, his story to help other people. So you gotta give it up for him, give it up for him. Give it up for him. He gave everything that he had, his personal inventory, to the community, homeless people, little kids. He gave it up. That's why this legacy tournament, memorial tournament, is for him. Najee was full of spirit. He always believed in good energy, good vibes. He was very laid back. He wanted to give back to his community. Early on, he always had that epiphany of that he wanted to mentor others. If he knew neighborhood kids that were in basketball or into the sports, he would take them for extra practice, make sure that he shows up for games. If he sees them walking home, he would drop them off to make sure that they got home safe. That's just how dedicated he was for his community. He really wanted the fourth ward to become better. I had a point in time in my life when everything was going bad. He would buy me new basketball sneakers, take me to the gym, play basketball. There's not a lot of people that you could trust with telling things and you know, like they'll have your back and comfort you. And he was one of those. I do a little bit of what he used to do for me. When I come to the Patterson Helen, I bring a bunch of younger kids with me. When I go play basketball, I bring a bunch of younger kids with me from my area. Times are tough, you need somebody to call. They could call me, just like how I used to be able to call him, you know, just to feel loved by someone that's not in your household. Najee was my best friend since I was like eight, nine years old. The neighborhood hero, that's what he was trying to do. That was his mission. Tragically, it was stopped early and beginning of the process of what he was trying to do. Everything that not did, I will still do while he's not here. So I will not let the tragic situation stop his work. That's, that's my mission. A lot of the work that Najee Seabrooks did in the community, it gives me motivation still to this day. He was the prime example of the neighborhood hero. That's something that I always wanted to do, and that's just what I'm doing now. I just want to see the community safe. I just want to see the kids having fun, going to the park, not, not worrying about if they're going to get shot or not, or 
the parents of the kids worrying if they kid gonna get shot going to the store. I just wanted to be safer. I don't want them to see some of the things that I had to see as a kid. It's hard for me to know what it feels like to someone who's just been shot. I, I don't know because I've never been shot. So who better to bring in than somebody who has gone through that, who survived it, who has turned the other cheek and not retaliated. These young men and women are such a strong factor of why this program is effective, but at the same time, some of their friends or their family members might still be impacted by the violence. So not only are they still recovering and decompressing and learning tools to address what they went through traumatically, but they are also being re-triggered because it's still happening in their community, it's still happening to their loved ones. They are still so closely related to it that we have to bring in tools for them. And there has to be ways that we train them to protect themselves, right, because they're constantly being re-triggered. So we have therapists on staff. We talk about self-help. It has to be centered in our work. Najee was more than a friend. He was my brother, like a little brother that I never had, you know. Being here at the hospital, being in his neighborhood, you think about him, it's difficult, it's triggering. But I find peace in knowing that he would want me to continue. He wouldn't want us to give up, even though it can be easy to say, it's not my problem, or I'm just tired of this, or it's too difficult. You just have to stay steadfast in the work and just know that that's what he would want because these kids need us. Our community needs us. It's never a time where we're gonna just leave them hanging or, you know, abandon them. It just it can't happen. <laughs>